feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another ref. Yeet, yeet, recording. I have an appointment with uh, Chief Harrell okay. at uh, 12 o'clock. Thank you. Thanks. Is that like a dispatch radio I hear or just something else? Sir? Is that like a dispatch radio I hear or something else? Dispatch? Yeah, like the radio that I hear in the background. Yeah, it's um, the sheriff's office. Oh, okay. So you, so you all have communication between them and here? Uh -huh. So if a call happens here in Pine Tops, are both PD and... Uh, not necessarily. So when... Well, and he probably will be able to answer the question, but uh, like what, what d dictates whether... Uh, the sheriffs are called and police department is called. Right. Um, normally, if someone called nine one one, uh huh, it's going to go to the sheriff's department. Oh, okay. All right. And then they they will dispatch you if they need. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's kind of a blue line esque kind of look, but not necessarily. Oh, I got it. Chief Harrell, how you doing? How are you doing? Good, thank you. All right, so uh, I want to be here. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll get up with you more. Sure, sounds good. Hey, give me one second. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Take your time. Let's go down here. We got some room. Okay. I'll follow you. Sharp uh, looking suit you got there. Stop. <laughs> and you smell good, too. Don't get used to it. <laughs> right? Don't get used to it. <laughs> I was wondering how close the that area was to here. What, oh, yeah, right here. Can I where should I put this? Where like, do uh, you want to put it? Where you? I'm probably gonna sit there. And okay. The back lights. Okay. Sure, sure, no problem. Let's we'll, light on or yeah, sure, that'll work. Let me put it over here for both of us. So it's not gonna be that long. We'll, I was here as an infant, so 
throughout life, my parents, of course, told me when I was young, they brought me a book, what adoption was. Oh, I, okay. I had to, didn't really care back then. I was like, okay, cool. Never really was interested until about, I've had thoughts throughout my life. I like, I wonder who my biological family is. So, mm-hmm. I actually, through some resources, I contacted them in Facebook. I found them in contact with my biological mother and father and um, two sisters and a brother in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Well, so long story short, my biological mother, I grew up, everybody thought I was Hispanic. They used to call me Chico and Paco. <laughs> okay. You name it, they called me that. So, you do have a little little bit of... Uh, yeah, and I was really dark, darker skinned as a kid because I was outside. If you saw my son right now, you'd think he was Hispanic. He's, okay. He's 10. Okay. He's very dark skinned. What? Well, um, well, so I, I contacted them um, and they started, one of the sisters thought it was a scam, the other one started crying when I told their story. Mm-hmm. So Scotland Neck is, as you're familiar, down the road. Sure. My biological mother is from Scotland Neck, something like that. This is got confused. She moved to Ohio with, however, my biological father is Greek. Okay. He, now that makes sense too. <laughs> well, yeah, so he was coming by the um, on the ship. He was in the Greek military. Okay. And he jumped ship, literally. Wow. Near Cleveland. He swam to shore and blah, blah, blah. He became an immigrant, met my mother. They had three kids. Um, they separated. She was pregnant with me. I was yeah. the youngest. Came to Scotland Neck. She came back home. She, her mother, this is her story. Her mm-hmm. mother knew that she was going to go back to her husband and they had a, they were fighting all the time. So she said, hey, you need, you don't need to keep that baby. So she gave me up for adoption that told everybody I died in childbirth. Oh, wow. So nobody knew I existed. Wow. So I was just kind of here. Um, that's the story of, so now I have a great relationship. I took them to, when I was, this has been eight years ago now, I took them to a, a UFC fight, my friend, was a UFC fighter, mm-hmm. um, and we went to. I took him to New York City, and we all met there. And you, you never thought we'd been apart. Been apart for all the years. And we, we have a great relationship. I go up there about three or four times a year. They come here. Me and my brother look like twins. Wow. I'm that's the good. youngest. My biological father. I met him, and I kept saying I was going to go back up there because my parents are here. Mm-hmm. I, I, God put me in yeah. where I'm supposed to be. You know. So uh, my. My biological father died of uh, COVID oh, after, wow. after I met him. Um, I, knew, I, knew, I knew him for about yeah two years. Oh. Well, what can I? I mean, what can I help you with? Just uh, well, thank you for being with me. First of all, I've been out here in Pine House for three years. I think about right around twenty years when we got here. But uh, I became aware of the shooting that occurred the other night right around where I live. I don't even know what direction it is, but just down the street from where we live, past where the child care center is. Yeah. Apparently there was a shooting there. So I inquired about that. My fiance was wondering about what was going on. At the, that night I came and I was, I was filming the officers that were there. A lot of different questions come up having not ever been in a smaller town like this is. So I'm always curious about, well, I've become curious about like jurisdictional type questions like when does uh, the sheriff get involved versus police department get involved, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And then I, I put a public records request basically asking for whatever communications that were that are public records. So I'm not certain that I know exactly what the law is with regards to those things. I know body cam is a little different than what I've experienced because I lived in Indiana for a period of time and I asked for body cam and just got it. But it don't, apparently it doesn't work quite that way here in North Carolina. So if you can clear anything up about that, that'd be great. And then let me know um, you know, what I would have access to as far as public records go with regards to incidents that have occurred here in Pine Tops that I'm aware of. I, I think in the summertime there was a person that got shot. It was like rapid fire, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I never really came and inquired about that, but I'm curious about that as well. Um, that incident that happened right around the corner and when we first got here, I saw signs about somebody getting shot, killed, or something like that. Along the same lines, we also heard that that someone died and and uh, gifted the the town of Pine Tops like some camera or you know like security cameras or whatever. 
That might be, uh, okay, that, yeah, it might not be true, but anyway, so, you know, just kind of those kind of things would, would be great for me to clear up and, and yeah, just and so, to, to meet you. So, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm the chief. I've been the chief here since about 2015, or at least leaving the department. I used to work for Rocky Mountain Police Department. Well, excuse me. So my whole career path was in October of 2000, 2000 I went to the Rocky Mountain Fire Department. Okay. Um. Stayed there about a year and a half. I switched over to the Rocky Mountain Police Department. I always wanted to be in law enforcement. Cool. My father was a cop for 37 years. So um, then I decided to come. I went to the other side of Charlotte. I've worked for Rocky Mountain for about five years. Mm -hmm. Went to the other side of Charlotte. Came back home. Um, kind of ran around in circles and came home. Sure. So this is home for me. And I, I learned in law enforcement and this is my personal interaction with people, you learn that it's not about arresting people or writing tickets. That's just part of the things you do. Sure. It's the fabric of your job. At the same time, when you come back and you have an actual attachment to the community mm -hmm. that you're working in, yeah. whether it be an older elderly person that you grew up with that raised you, mm -hmm. Or new people like yourself that come in town. Right. I've learned from being in bigger cities and bigger type law enforcement, you don't have that same interaction. You do maybe in, in certain neighborhoods. Right. Because that's the area you're working. Mm -hmm. Charlotte Mech is a perfect example. It's much bigger, right? You would not know every citizen sure. in Charlotte. Yeah. You don't know that. You, you have a district that you're going to work in. That's a huge district and you're not going to do it. Uh, NYPD, same deal. You know, you, you, there's so many people, yeah. it's an impossibility to know everybody and have the same interaction. So my my thought process in law enforcement is not to see how many people I can throw them into jail. Right, it's, right. it's how many people can I uh, have a platform to assist in life as well as we can help each other. Because I need help too. Yeah. It's the, the good thing about law enforcement, when you finally figure it out, the badge doesn't give you any kind of, you know, superiority over anybody. Maybe in theory, mm -hmm. but it doesn't in in the ultimate scheme of things. Everybody's here. You have your criminal here, you have your cop here, and we have a jury or a judge who decides. And ultimately, in my belief, God's going to decide it anyway. That's my personal belief. Right, so, right. You know, that's my only judge, and that's what it should be everybody's judge. We're just here to keep the peace and all that. So you, once you get in law enforcement and you do it long enough, you kind of figure out, and I tell these young people that they're going to be able to see, it's like, it's great what you saw on TV, but let's look at reality. <laughs> it's a little different, yeah. Yeah, you got So that's why your smaller town or your smaller area type cops tend to have more of an interaction or more of a relationship with um, citizens. Than, yeah. You know, and I'm not knocking the bigger city. Sure. It's just, there's just not as much time for much of a relationship and actual, hey, because they got to move on to whatever else. How, how many officers do you do we have here in uh, Python? Right now we only have seven full-time positions. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, would, I, I estimate it to my fiance, eight. But I was going. There used to be. Now we were allocated for eight last year. They reduced us this year to seven. Wow. We have seven. Um, we have reserve positions that are. We only have two right now. Reserve, a reserve officer is like a part time officer. Okay. Typically they work somewhere else, but they want to do some part time, kind of like some um, e extra work that they can come make. We don't pay them benefits, but right, right. the regular job for that. So, over how many shifts do the seven officers cover? Night and day. Every oh, okay. Day. So, so basically, twenty-four hours. With but, but here, here's the thing to remember. And this is confusing. Um, there's seven officers, but not seven at a time. You right. typically in pine tops, four. It takes four officers to run a day and night shift, twenty-four-seven. Okay. okay. There's four officers because they work two on, two off, three on, and two off. It, it's it's a weird schedule. I, I can, sounds like the, my mom worked two 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 and eighty. She was in the Navy. That yeah. sounds kind of similar to what she worked. So you're working like if, Eve mid. I can give you I can give you a copy of the power schedule okay. works before you leave. But that's yeah. interesting though that, that you'd have it that way though. But go ahead. Yeah yeah yeah. And it, and we are we are one of the only smaller towns smaller I say smaller towns 
that, that we have a dispatch, we have a 24 hour, 365 days a year operation. We don't have coverage from the sheriff's office like a lot of places do. Now, speaking of that, because you asked the question, um, for video purposes, would you rather ask me a question and then me respond to it, or just rambling on, just going to? No, the way that we're talking, I mean, it's fine. I, I mean, I, interview per se, and you know, I do have the interests uh, th that I do, and, and I and I I, have, I told you that I have a, a YouTube channel, but I'm really just trying to figure out, uh, you know, more about my government, more about the uh, the things that happen in my town, and all those things. So a conversation is is much more appealing than okay, cool. than it, you know. Me having all these different questions that I just throw at you. So, so yeah. when it comes to the sheriff's office and other agencies, we are in what you have to realize about Pine Tops. If you look at a map, we're in the middle of Wilson, Tarboro, Rocky Mountain, Greenville. We're in the middle of these bigger cities. Mm -hmm. So we branch out and we have what's called mutual aid. Okay. Mutual aid is there's a statute on that as well. It means that if we have a mutual aid with a another department, a neighboring department, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, we go have jurisdiction there. Okay. Okay? Now, that's, that doesn't mean we go patrol it unless they ask us to. Right. It means that when we're there, at their request, we have the same jurisdiction that their officers do. Okay. For example, Tarboro. When they call me, what, if there's a shooting in Tarboro and they need assistance, the sheriff's officer going, everybody's going, blah, blah, blah. Right. We go as well. Okay. And we automatically have... We show up just to help. It's usually an emergency situation. Okay. School shootings are a big one. Sure. Okay? Everybody's going to that. Right. It's, it's a no-brainer. Yes. Um, the sheriff's office. Now, that is your local other agency around you. They, of course, they have jurisdiction in all of Ed Edgecombe County. Right. They're Edgecombe County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office. So they have jurisdiction in Edgecombe County as well as Pine Tops. They're here, but they don't answer calls here. That's our job. Now, if... So when the shooting the other night you saw, we're going to help them, they're going to help us. Sure. We answer a lot of calls in the county off mutual aid basis because as law enforcement is short, as everybody knows, shorthanded, hence we have seven people. It's not enough. I tell our board that all the time, but you've got to look at your tax base trying to see what you can yeah. get going. Um, we answer a lot of calls in the county to assist the county. They immediately something major like a shooting they know they're all coming here right so but we handle the investigation so the mutuality of the call the, the you said mutual aid and you mentioned not having um enough resources so is there some type of like uh compensation that that each county provides to each other so that they can cover those things or is it mm -hmm. by by nature the fact that you are assisting all the other ones that surround you you're actually mitigating the cost a little bit. Depends on what you're talking. Example, um, if if there's a gig that they're paying for, mm -hmm. it's usually special events. Right. That's when, and it's clarified by the, the communication of whether the, they want they are paying for that gig or not. If sure. not, no, we don't pay them to come help us. Right. Or vice um, versa. Yeah, vice versa. No, right. no, we don't do that. Yeah. Okay. There'd be too much paperwork. I mean, Just, it'd be too confusing. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna do that. We we all have to help each other. Mm -hmm. So now the sheriff has to cover. Let's get that. The sheriff, people pay taxes to the county and the town they work in. Right. So the sheriff has to cover pine tops. When we say cover, though, it doesn't mean they're in pine tops. Right. Doing patrol. But that's, that's that being Edgecombe, Edgecombe County, right? Yeah. So if we didn't have a police department, Edgecombe County Sheriff's Department would still have to respond to Pine Tops. Right. But the citizens of Pine Tops realize without a police department, which they've had, you're not going to have that service. Sure. Whitaker's is a good example. They have a couple of police officers. I'm not knocking them. They don't have a huge police department base. So what usually happens is their officer is off. They have people fighting or maybe shooting. Yeah. And the sheriff, depending on where they're at, has to come from maybe Macclesfield, which sure. is... So you might have a 20 to 30 minute response time. Well, not 30 minutes, they're, they're booking it. 20 minutes. That means a lot when you're, you know, you're getting your door kicked in by yeah. somebody trying to break in. Absolutely. Where are the police at? And Pine Tops has realized, look, I'm not Superman, but having this service here is something they're willing to pay for. Sure. They, they've had several years in a row where somebody would bring up, hey, let's look at going to 
you know, reducing our police force more. Mm -hmm. We're just getting away with them. And multiple citizens, this room obviously doesn't take much to fill it up. But they'll be waiting outside because they want police service. Right. Um, and they, they have, we have, the town has to figure out if they're yeah. trying to cut it, if they're trying to cut it, how they want to actually do that. But the, but citizens are like, we don't want you to cut it. We're so already, we're like, well, where are we going to get the money? You know what happens? International um, Association Chiefs of the Police, they have a study that they created, which is a realistic study that came from other law enforcement executives that said it, it accounts not only... People focus on population too much and not demographics sure. of location. Population, 1,200 people. Oh, y'all don't need all these cops. You only have 1,200 people. Do you know where we're at? And do you know what kind of crime we have? Sure. In the middle of these other cities, we have our violent crime usually comes from, let's just be honest, it comes from a lot of gang-type situations. Mm -hmm. Rocky Mount, every day you turn on. I'm not knocking Rocky Mount. Not throwing anybody in the bus. I used to work there. They have a bigger area, obviously, but you and they have media attention to it um, mm -hmm. with fighting crime yep. and it's shooting, shooting, shots fired, shooting, shooting, gang shooting, blah blah blah. So what happens? The rival gangs would usually meet here. Um, in Python? Yeah, well, because it's a center location. It's like meet me over here. They don't have any cops. Let's do this now. Years ago, well, 2008, we started establishing a camera system. We started having these things on camera and putting people in jail, and they couldn't even go to court. They wouldn't try their case. They just have to plead. It was like you're right here on camera. On camera doing it, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of became another brand. We, I really started pushing a lot of um, federal cases, and you know, not just a slap on the wrist. These guys are going to federal prison sometimes for life. Um, it's not a bragging point. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, we got to show the ones who are doing these violent, violent crimes. Sure. You know, a kid who sells weed on the street when he's 17, let the guy learn and, and wipe his record out. It's just something, it was, it's the fabric of being young and doing something stupid. Sure. But a guy who's constantly shot and killed people throughout life, yeah, yeah you need, they need to go sit it down for a little while. So you gotta weigh those, those options. Um, where any criminal activity that occurs and they get locked up, where is a person um, incarcerated in my job? It's from County. Jail. Oh, jail. We, we take, so we have to commute to Tarboro, where the jail is, mm -hmm. the magistrate in the jail. Okay. So, and that's basically everywhere in Edgecombe County. Okay. So, so I'm, I, I plan on going to the courthouse, looking at, listening to some cases, those kind of things. But uh, it's a little different. I mean, I lived in, in Utah for 30 years. I wish you came last week. I had an interesting trial where I had to put a big map up. And we, we had a guy that got 34 years in prison for... Stalking a lady on camera, we I call it stalking. He told me not to use that word, and then I changed the word to hunted. He he was having beef with her grandson. Rival gang, mm -hmm. they constantly had beef. So this guy said, "I'm going to follow your grandmother around." He followed the grandma around in um in pie tops, and we have I had to break down every move he made when she parked the shell station. He rode around. And, Wow. Waited on her, hunted her, then she went to the Dollar General. No, excuse me, she went to Pine Stop. He went to Dollar General where he could see her. Mm -hmm. um, this was about a 15 minute interaction. Then wow. he went to the county and shot her on, on the bridge. Wow. Our grandma. Yeah. So she didn't die. Right. So it was attempted first to murder. Right. But he got, he got convicted. We had a long trial. And uh, it would have been I interesting to, if you I have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, his name's Kelvin Jenkins. Kelvin? Yeah, T E L V I N. Jenkins. Yeah, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, they didn't do a press release on it, ironically, no, not yet. I got it. I'm glad you're here interested. Yeah. Because more needs to, more positivity, and if there's negative, negativity, obviously it's public information if it's negative. But there's a lot of positive that don't go out there. Sure. Positivity doesn't really, and not during the business of selling. But it does, yeah. It doesn't sell. Yeah, t turmoil and all that stuff sells. The good part that you talked about, the positivity, being able to talk to our leaders, our, our police officers, I, I think builds relationships versus tears them down. So. It does. With us getting shorthanded, people just don't understand the stereotype of a small town is nothing ever happened. Yeah. Why, don't, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's like, if you only knew, 
what actually happened. And you see why there's not as much time now with the, for these other things, which I would love to um, create. We're going to, a lot of what this comes down to, and, and I talk about this in politics, period. I'm not a big political person, but right now presidential elections are going on. Sure. And people are focused on that. Yeah. You being in the military, it might mean more to you than it does me. Because I realize whoever the president is, okay? Yeah. My first line of decision making is local politics. It's it's what can I do for our local people and what what service do they need? Right, right. Not what the president said on, on TV that sure. made everybody mad, you know? Like, and so the town meeting that I attended, and I saw, that's where I saw you initially. Yeah, yeah. So you get uh, your direction and then all those kind of things from what goes on here, is that what you mean? I mean, well, I'm saying like that, you know, what, what, what it is that the town needs, right? Yeah, so the legislation, this is the legislative branch of lo local, but they make decisions on what rules. Law enforcement stuff, more of a specialized type. Hey, you're the law enforcement manager. Yeah. You handle law enforcement stuff if they need to know. But they they make decisions as far as policy. Well, I make law enforcement policy. They make more like town personnel type Or and those kind of things. Ordinances, yeah. policies, and things like that. Right. Um, your, your police are more of a specialized, and there's a lot of legal things, and not once again, not being arrogant, but... The board members are made up of citizens sure. that were voted on. Right. It could have been 50 people voted for somebody they like. Right. Because we don't have this huge thing. They're not, nobody expected them to come in here. They're not legal professionals. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So, well, like, so to, to your point, I didn't mean to cut you off, but the sheriff's office mm -hmm. is an elected office, right? Except yeah. for the deputies with, with him. They're not elected. He's, they, he, He's appoint, he appoints them. He appoints them, right? So, they're bound by the people similarly, but um, I, you just made me think in my mind, like, who's it, who's more easily swayed, I guess is the question I'm asking. Because if, if it, he's working for the people directly, he's going to be doing things, obviously, that the, pe that the people want. Yeah. But then I'm not saying that your officers and you are any less bound to what the people need, but you're, you're not, you're hired, right? You're not, uh, like, we're, like, we're hired. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to diminish the, no, go the, ahead. the loyalty to it, but I'm saying it is a little bit different, right? The sheriff's department, how he, that he would offer operate versus what uh, a local police department would do. So, so the board, the town manager works at the direction of the board. Right. Okay. They hire him right. or, or her. Okay. Right now it's a him. That's a... Mr. Ventresco. Okay, yeah. I forgot his name. I talked. The, we work for him. Right. We let me phrase that correctly. We we work for the people. All of us work for the people. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, my direct supervisor boss is the town manager. Okay, makes sense. Town manager handles all the town. Now, town manager doesn't. A lot of them he doesn't know anything about law enforcement. Right. It's equating to a plumber. You get hired as a to be a manager of a plumbing business. You've never plumbed in your life. Yeah. But you know how to get people, you're great at motivating people to get there and do their job. Sure. Um, sometimes that doesn't work because some of your employees want to know, hey, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me how to do this. So it's all about not being a dictator sometimes. Yeah. It's just saying, hey, I need you to do this. And when there's a complaint, you, you let the proper person give you the right answer. Yeah. Well, people aren't, I mean, I, I was a director of a call center, Yeah. and people don't necessarily work only for a paycheck. They work for people they love, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. people that, that can get them to do the things they want to and want yeah. to come back. So The one thing about me, I don't BS. You know, I, none of this stuff you see from me, and, and some people respect that more. A lot of times you'll see me, most of the time, jeans and a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. If you follow me, you'll see me sitting on the porch with somebody just talking. Why? Not because I was like, oh, this would look good. Let me make sure. No, it's, it's really because that's what I want to do, especially at, for the elderly. Yeah. Got to be honest. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of elderly who just are just kind of there. And, it, you know, you can learn a lot. If you actually take time to listen. A lot of time, and you, especially these men that are just sitting there, and you, you listen to a, a veteran, and you can just sit and listen to their... There's so many 
that and they start talking and the young generation just ignores it. It's like, what's Vietnam? No one cares. <laughs> but you start yeah. talking to them, you're like, wow. And you really you're interested in it. And you're like, man, that's that's very interesting to, to listen to. Yeah. If we keep on talking about how, how bad the world is instead of trying to do something about it, and I don't know if we'll ever do anything about it. What is it? Because generations change. Inflation. Yeah. Oh, man, things got so expensive, so I'm just going to stay over here and complain about it yeah. instead of finding a way to fund it. You know, what should I do? In the meantime, Mr. Inflation over here keeps going. Stuff keeps getting higher, mm -hmm. and you're still over here fussing. Or the same policies that apply that didn't necessarily or that aren't necessarily working still doing the same thing, and that problem still keeps building. Change is great. Yeah. When, when you can find change, you can make it happen to a realistic Realistic point, sir. Sure, sure. sure. Um, yeah. Okay. So going is that something that you got for me, or is that something that you were referring to? I was going to give you this. Oh, okay. For the public records. Oh, good. Uh, good. And, good, and, good, and good. they help you. Uh, look, actually, so, uh, how many pages is it? Um, twenty-four pages. It's from the um, justice. Just basically where we get our legal stuff from. Okay. And it goes through everything. You you might want to read it first. I mean, just and then obviously come come back whenever we can have these conversations a lot. What'd you say your address was? I, it sounds as though you you we have well you have in place a number of different uh, about is there a camera yeah. system yeah uh, it, with well, within Python. Oh yeah, I thought you knew that. No, I mean, so that's what I was talking about. Is that the system that uh, was gifted by somebody? Not at all. I don't know where you got it. Oh, okay. So that's that's like a what do you call it? urban legend or something like Pretty that. Much. Okay. That's, that's not true. All right. No, no, <laughs> it's like I don't know where you got that I, from. I, I, well, I don't wish somebody would die, but I wish somebody would gift us those. There, we we started the camera program a long time ago. We're up to almost sixty cameras now. Oh wow. Okay. I'm not a big. We, there was a story on it a while back. We had a hit and run where an old man was hit. We ended up arresting another old man who hit him accidentally. Okay. Um, but he died. This was a long time ago. And um, the bigger news outlets got hold of that we had cameras. Oh, okay. And they came into a big story on it. I'm not a big... Some people... This might be negative in some people's mind. Mm -hmm. I don't hold things back. I'm not a big look-at-me type guy. Sure. And some people were like, oh, you just don't work. I was like, no, I'm out here. I'm more of a night owl. And I'll tell you why. That one officer I told you we got working, this is not easy. Things happen in Pine Tops the same way they happen in Rocky Mountain. Okay. The same people come through here. It's no no easier because it's a small town. No, not right. at all. Not in our location. That's what I was talking about. The demographics of where we're at. The location is what I mean, where we're at. Mm -hmm. In between these bigger cities. So, Macclesfield is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. If Macclesfield, which is down the road, it's it's got one road running through it as far as like a major type. There's no other towns, bigger cities that use this as a commute to go back and forth. Right. If there was one thing that you wanted me to know about your office, um, what the, the job that you do that you haven't already explained, what would it be if there was one thing that you would say, I want him to know this about my 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 people, my office. Transparency. Transparency. There's, okay. there's nothing... Well, you, you were certainly okay with, with me doing what I'm doing, so... Yeah, yeah, this is not a secret society. <laughs> we're not going to make it through this life without dying. Amen. It's, it's, <laughs> for sure. It's going to happen. We're all destined for the same conclusion, mm -hmm. which is death. While we're here, you know, our, our phones just blow up. We might as well... Uh, you know, make it the best we can. Sure. Just, uh, um, the thing, a lot of it is driven by, or a lot of anger, hate is driven by social media. Mm -hmm. I don't mean, and you're in social media, but I don't mean that you're negative. But a lot of it is, what can I see that happened in a matter of one second that yeah. just happened in New York? or just happened in Chicago. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm naming places far away. Yeah. California. I could see it right now on my phone. Matter of fact, we just both got phone calls. It could have been alert. Got alert, yeah. Um, So-and-so shot somebody in California, blah, 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 investigation. And there I am thinking the same group of people are here. It's a secret society. Yeah. Um, I think when reality kicks in, a lot of 
the people realize that um, equality is a little better than people think it is. And people might have different outlooks on that. I can't speak from the shoes of people who don't feel that way. Very right, right. Sure. And I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, speak, I speak from my myself. Uh, but, but while we're here, um, can make the best of it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I do appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to read that for certain, um, and I might have more questions. But if if uh, do you have is it do you have an email address? Yes, yeah, S Harrell, S H A R R E L L, uh -huh. at pinetopsnc.com. I think I might have it. Um, I, I I will use your number sparingly. I appreciate that you gave it to me, but um, that's uh, I I mean email is great. I would, you can call me 24 seven. I'm telling you, that's, I tell people that like, that's how you get me. Okay. If you call the police department, I'm not saying I'm going to ignore you, Right. but it's just another thing to get back to. Well, if to you be call a, that and I, now I have your number in there and I see you call, I'm going to call you back. If I don't answer right then, I'll know to call you right back. Well, so when I attended the meeting, you spoke and I, Fred, that's his name, right? Fred, sometimes that's called whatever. I met with him, um, looked at the dilapidated properties, whatever, and I did reach out to you, but based on what you just told me, I didn't have the best way to get a hold of you. So, and I, I totally understand. I didn't resent it. I, I knew I would eventually, uh, you know, run into you, but um, I did email you, and I can imagine that whatever... Did you email me? What did it come from? Um, you mean like what was the uh, what email, was address? email address? So it was FAQTheBadness at gmail.com. Well, I apologize. No, I, I mean, yeah, I, don't I don't hold it against you. Like, I mean, you, you've more than been gracious with your time. And I, I forgot, I just mentioned it because you said, reach out, be a phone. When you come here and want to learn about the police department, mm -hmm. I admire that so much. I wish I could get more people to do that instead of making assumptions. Yeah. And then, now there's tens of thousands of questions you probably can answer. Ask them. I'm going to give you tens of thousands of answers to the point that I can. And yeah. uh, they're... You know, um, I'd love for you to see our camera system if you have it. Yes, um, I, I, I'd be happy to look at it. Yeah, and the, I mean, um, if you look around town sometimes, you'll see the cameras in the poles. Uh, we're actually adding more now. And so, well, so you you are sharing that the camera system exists. Oh, yeah, they don't have do it. Well, so what I'm, I guess my question is, a lot of times some people say, you know, they don't want the camera system to be seen. But... So, I mean, no. they, they act as a deterrent too, right? Just, it's a, just it's a, for it's being a deterrent. seen. Well, yeah. they're, they're only, so first of all, they're on traffic poles. Transparency, what I said. Mm -hmm. If you do something in the public, so, so when, nobody's complained. People, the citizens here love it. We haven't had one complaint. But the fear in general is, oh, that's against my right. Big Brother's watching. Or, or, exactly. We're not zooming in your property. Yeah. We're not zooming in your house looking yeah. at um we're we're not zooming into the ATM machine to read your ATM yeah. card number. Anything you do in the public, it's the same as an officer, which they're allowed to have a pair of binoculars yeah. looking at you. Don't so what we do can't trust my say hi. Your usual <laughs> complaints of that are criminals. Right, right. And there's like, well, I don't like you watching me. It's like, well, you watch me. You video everything I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm fine with that because I'm not out doing anything that I shouldn't be doing. Right, right. Well, you, you know, I, and I, I'm not, I think I, I may have experienced this in my lifetime, but people might, uh, an officer might ask for your name, absent a crime, and a person might be opposed to doing that. An officer might say, um, what are you hiding? I think that might be more of a strategy to, to engage with the, you know, getting information, but unless there is a crime, you don't necessarily have to give the, mm -hmm. that information. No. But to your point, um, those places where you're in public and you're, you have a camera facing somewhere else, I mean, uh, like you said, it's the criminals that are worried about that. Anybody else is not really concerned about it. Yeah, there's not <laughs> like, like information, like I'm glad you mentioned that. There's a lot of people who go out and um, there's this line of cops need to know what the law is and what they can do. Mm -hmm. And people trying to like poke these cops and say, yeah. well, let's go see what I can. Yeah, well, I agree. What can I drag out of? There's, there's, there's professional, not auditors. You're respectful because you're asking me, hey, what am I allowed to get? And I'm going to say, with me, basically everything. Mm -hmm.
because I have nothing to hide. But yeah, I'm not going to tell you the officer's address. Yeah, well, and that's just common sense. But people try to. There's some that try to do sure. that. Now the other end is. Yeah, we, I've had. Trust me, I've seen so many video interaction. You'll see that where certain officers, you never know. They could have gone through basic law enforcement and been the most tip-top person, and they get out in the real world, and they haven't had personal interactions. Young people now are growing up with tablets and cell phones. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. Yeah. They can talk however they want, push a button, send F you to whoever, no recourse, right? Yeah. Maybe they're going to F you back. Yeah. You do that in front of a person, or you act like you're, you know, I'm better than you. Yeah. Their presence, that's the first thing of the use of force continuum, which is how do you go from presence to deadly force. Right. You know, presence is the very first one. How do you look? How do you act? How do you talk? How do you interact with people in general? Because obviously you can go anywhere and pick a fight. Mm -hmm. Or you could just be a good-natured person and try to understand that Whoever you're interacting with most of the time, if you were called, is having a bad day. <laughs> yeah. They don't really have interaction like we're doing. Yeah. Traffic stops. Um, that's, that's a big interaction. This happens daily. Mm -hmm. And if you walk up like a robot, like a cop robot, people are intimidated. I'm intimidated. Yeah. Co other cops are intimidated. When I pass a trooper, I might be in my police car. And when I pass a highway patrolman, and I, I'm like... I look back in my rear view. Yeah. It's, it's a natural, natural. reaction. Yeah. Now, if you get pulled over, everybody does this. It, it's a psyche of like, it, I mean, man, this guy looks like a butthole. <laughs> and it, it gives you that, like, you know, um, is this going to be a cool? But as soon as the cop walks up to you and he's like, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, hey, what's up? It's it, different. It's a little bit different. Yeah. You might still get a ticket for what you were doing. Or you talk to yourself, and you're not supposed to. They teach you in uh, in BLET, and this is how it's supposed to be, I guess, that you're supposed to make your decision of whether you're going to write that person a ticket before you even pull them over. If we're talking real, it's about the interaction itself. Mm. Now, if you're going, okay, we have 35 mile per hour zone. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going... 40. You might get pulled over. And if you admit that you're going 40, yes, sir, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just in a hurry. I, 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 yeah, I was probably speeding. Okay, cool. Most of the time, they're going to run your license and get you out of there. Right. But as soon as that 40 turns in, you pull me over. For, it happens all the time. And it's like, we're getting in a fight because you got pulled over. They, they'll admit they were speeding. Yeah, I got somewhere to be. We've got the radar signs out there now to tell your speed. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more of them, by the way. Okay. Um, and we'll stop some people. Um, I remember one specifically that it's happened several times. They see the number flashing up there, and his was 67. Oh, my goodness. And you pull him over, and he was nice, but he was like, man, that's very confusing. I was like, why? He said, I thought that was telling me I could go 67. Oh, I was like, that <laughs> makes that, was like, that makes no sense at all. Gives a little perspective. It doesn't make sense. Uh, and uh, I think this will be the, my last thing that I'll say. Yeah. So are you going to show me the cameras? Is yeah. that what we're yeah, going to look at? Um, I was going to say, you shared with me your situation. I'm going to share with you. I have, a, I have three daughters. They are um, 29, 27, and my youngest daughter just turned 13. A year prior to her being born, her mother and I, we had a child that we gave up for adoption. So I'm in, and in fact, for this past Christmas, my fiance gave me a kit so that I can register myself to have him be able to contact me. In the very beginning, we saw him um, every year, basically, for like the first two years. And then just over time, we just stopped. How old is he? In? So he's going to be basically 14. 14. So my, my youngest daughter is 13. He was born about, I think, about a year before her. And... Uh, I'll be expecting that one day he'll, if I'm still around, he'll come looking for me. But, um, you know, we, the situation that we were in, who knows, who knows or who would have known that it would have changed, changed so much that we were able to have our, our, youngest, our youngest child. But even still, we were not together. Yeah. And 
the same situation that you described is that I still believe to this day that, you know, he has parents that love him and he probably would have been better off than what we could have offered him at that time. So yeah. So that's my sharing with you. Yeah, well, no, no, I appreciate it. Everybody's got a path, man. And it's like, I don't know your religion. I don't know where you're at in life, but I believe there's an ultimate out there, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that you're on whatever path you're supposed to be. Like right now, we're supposed. To, this is my thought. We're supposed to be sitting here right now. I'm supposed to be here with you right now. Yeah. Um, in a minute, I'll I'll have a flat tire. I was supposed to have a flat tire. Right. And then there's a wreck up the road. Um, every time you, you can always look back and see what in retrospect. Like, you know, I look at so I look at my son. So when you look at the negativity of, oh, my mom, my biological mother told everybody I died. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew I existed. Then I look at my son. I'm like, well. And I've been divorced as well. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't get divorced, then I wouldn't have had this kid. And I look at my son and I'm like, if I want to change, if I really want to go back and change things, if I had a time machine, I just got to, I'm basically going to get rid of my son. Yeah. You know? So, so <laughs> yeah. you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, you're used, you want the things you have in life, but you want to change things so, so you can be in a better position. So you're like, you know what? You know, no, it's, let it be. Let yeah, it that's be why I said just go with what it. What it is, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. When they work, they're cool. <laughs> okay, so this we have different panel. Are you am I on now? So yeah, you can see this. There's nothing. There's, is it playing? Yeah. So oh yeah. This is live footage of uh, different cameras placed in pine tops and we have different we have some in the building and outside the building they're on different right. screens you don't I mean no so you you um I mean I, I'm sure you know each one of these but uh how, does, oh it, it's saying it's saying the uh cross street or, or whatever right it tells the location of the camera yeah okay not these, these are the street cameras the other okay. ones are like so we have one in the evidence room uh -huh. you know what I'm saying like okay stuff that if somebody were to break in the building cool 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 um and, then, and you see the ones that are darked out? Yeah. They go down. They break just like everything else. So oh, we have, really? We have to repair them. Yeah, they're not. It takes a lot of maintenance for these things. Uh, any have, have you had any uh, anybody try to uh, sabotage them no. directly? No. They're, they're not. not. Not yet. <laughs> now that we know of, we haven't seen anything. Sure. Um, this is our license plate cameras, which you can play back. Oh, okay. Try to read people's plates. Oh, wow. And that's public information as well, as you know. Okay. So, and we use them, obviously, when something happens to try to... Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that's, I mean, it, that seems, uh, seems much more robust than I would have even imagined. I'm sure this, it's something to be proud about that you have this. Um, it helps us. It's helped other agencies yeah, so much. I, I can mean, imagine. People that come through here, and we, our camera system has been used in a lot of cases from out of town as well people want to know know about our cameras well, and you said that there was a that, that they there was a story done about it uh, i think yeah, you said that you, that, you, that was maybe 2017 maybe oh wow that. okay but that, yeah um just google it i'll definitely check it out for sure thank you for watching if you have a video you'd like for us to cover use the submit link in the description or pinned comment if you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.